All right, welcome to Wide Awake Radio. I am Charlie McGrath, your host. It is Wednesday, February 23rd. Uh, Dimcad, uh, also known as Reginald, will be joining us here in just a minute. Um, if you're listening and not in the chat room, we have exactly 100 people in the chat room. If you'd like to uh, join them, go to wideawakenews.com, click on the Wide Awake Radio link, and you can join them in the chat. Or you can just listen to it from uh, your uh, whatever rinse feed you ha- happen to be listening to right now. But if you'd like to join in the chat, head on over and jump in, and you can post questions for myself or Reginald uh, a little bit later on in the show. <coughs> Excuse me, in the show. We will be taking callers, 877-342-6673, uh, for the entire hour. All right, let's get into it, because uh, here's the deal. Uh, a couple days ago, I put out a video saying, you know, this is it. The, the collapse has begun. Um, Reginald sent me a message where he agreed with it. So we're going to get into that subject here in a little bit. Uh, but this is this is a video I'm working on for, for that's going to come out later tonight. And, and in a nutshell, uh, you, you, we have to look at the the unrest that's going on. And, and oddly enough, I'm not speaking to the unrest that's happening in Tunisia or in Egypt or the uh, the unrest and uh, murders that are going on in Libya right now. I'm talking the unrest in our very own country because right now, you know, civil unrest has begun in earnest. I, I don't. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. But we, we, we have to be the voices of reason uh, in this community, in the alternative media community, because uh, I'm already seeing this this outpouring of left-right propaganda. And it's on both sides. You know, regardless of how you feel about unions or collective bargaining or government workers or private sector, wherever you think uh, your allegiance lie, you need to look in the mirror and realize that uh, you're being used by an agenda, by, a pow- by the powers that be, uh, as a distraction, as a way to take the focus off of where it should be, which is on the uh, banking cabal that runs this country and the world and our monetary policy, which has led to everything that we're experiencing right now. You know, economics is a boring subject. Nobody likes to talk about it. But in reality, it is without a doubt, besides your family, you know, besides your loved ones, it is without a doubt the most important factor in your life because you have to get up and perform in an economy every single day, like it or not. And it's the same as it is for me, as it is for Reginald, as it is for you listening, as it is for the people in Libya, Egypt, wherever. You have to get up. You have to do something in order to earn something so you can eat something. And when it all breaks down, you know, when it all breaks down, you need to look at what uh, caused your economy uh, to implode. And right now, you know, in, in the civil unrest that's happening in this country, and I'm going to take Wisconsin and Indiana on right now because that's where it's going on. There is anger, hate, and hostility on both sides of this argument. But that's all it is. It, it is generated fervor uh, by a, an apparatus that wants us uh, arguing amongst ourselves and fighting with one another. The reality of it is this. Take away the collective bargaining of the unions. Okay. Fire every uh, state worker in uh, Wisconsin. Every one of them, governor included. Okay. Fire every governor, uh, every uh, state legislature in this country. Fine. We still cannot pay off the debt that these central banksters have led us into. We need to understand. We need to focus the, the, our attention and we need to focus our anger at where it is deserved. It's deserved in this group of elite, uh, in my estimation, in my opinion, scumbag, parasitic, blood-sucking squid that, that have l- latched on to humanity and is sucking it dry. And they're, you know, the end game was announced in 2008 when they, just, this, they were going for the last grab, the last grasp, the last bit of wealth the world had to offer, and they were going to suck it up and then consolidate and institute global... Uh, a global uh, governance over finance. This this isn't stuff I'm making up. This isn't stuff Reginald's making up on his YouTube channel. This is stuff that we read right from the, the headlines. They've announced it. This is what they're doing, plain and simple. Me being angry at a fellow citizen because he's a union member or because he's a government worker or because he had his home foreclosed on or he's on 99 weeks of unemployment or he's on welfare or whatever reason uh, the, the red team says I should be mad at him for, is nothing more than me being used as an absolute ass and a pawn. All right, all I'm doing is generating anger and hate and hostility towards the wrong person. I, I'm taking my frustration, that my my indignation that could be righteous. You know, yes, I'm affected. My economy is affected, and, and so this indignation is righteous, but it's not when I uh, unleash it on my fellow citizen who's living in the same 
shell-shocked economy that I'm living in. You see, that when pulling stories for the website today, it became crystal clear to me. Because the first one I pulled up and read talked about a right-winger, a staffer, who made a comment on his blog about that the police should use live ammunition against the protesters in Wisconsin. Duly fired for his comments because they were ridiculous at best. But that is the main uh, ideology of the right, of, of what, if you're playing for the red team, that's what you're supposed to feel right now. These no good so and so state working SOBs, they've sunk our country, unions are destroying us. And if you're on the other side of that coin, if you're on the left team, the blue team, you're supposed to take a look at, uh, at those comments and get your ha- anger all enraged and you're ready to take to the streets and fight these people. And if you're on the right, you're getting mad because you have a, a story that came out a little bit later after that where you had Democrat leaders saying, hey, guess what time? It's time for these uh, protests to turn bloody. You know, th- this, is, <laughs> this is an absolute... Sham, ladies and gentlemen. That's all this is. It's smokescreen. It's a diversion. It's a way for you to take your anger and focus it at your fellow citizen rather than looking at what brought the world to this economic collapse. Plain and simple. All right, let's get uh, our good friend of the program, Reginald, also known as Dimcad. Let's get him on the air and get his take on current events. Reginald, are you there? Oh yeah, I am here. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm I'm uh, I'm fighting a, a sinus infection. I have been all week, and I made it through uh, 13 minutes without oh, yeah. uh, coughing on You're doing air, well so, so far. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. just thinking about some of your comments, and basically, it, the way the economy is going, even even with the way that the government's playing with the numbers, the unemployment numbers, which I did a video on on that, and you also did some videos on that as well. With the unemployment situation in this country, the fact that things are going downhill, people are going to get angry anyway. So it's better for the establishment, the powers that be, to have the anger directed at one another. It's better that we're in the streets uh, throwing rocks at one another instead of uh, us getting angry at the, the actual cause of our situation. And so, so it's a lot better to have all of us going after one another than to have us focusing on, uh, well, how can I put this? put this nicely, uh, the owner of the plantation, which is right. sort of what they did with the slaves, basically. They sort of had the slaves, the, the dark ones turned against the light-skinned ones, the, uh, the young against the old, the women against the men. And while they were fighting one another, uh, nobody really focused on the actual owner of the plantation, or the actual system itself. So that's what's really happening right here. It's called a Willie Lynch uh, syndrome, and it's a, a very common tactic, and they're just applying it here in America for all of us. Yeah, and, and uh, Willie Lynch, that's right, because you, you had brought that syndrome up before oh, yeah. um, on the program. And, uh, and that's absolutely correct. I mean, that, you know, it, and in fact, it's easy to get to, to go down that road. I did uh, two hours today on uh, uh, Eric Lovely's uh, uh, radio program, Light in the Darkness. And, uh, you know, it, it was amazing. I, there, there is, even in this community, which I would say, Reginald, probably still leans. Uh, if we were going to term it in right left, it still leans more to a conservative point of view. Um, I, you know, I don't know about you. As far as myself, I don't think I'm more to the right or to the left. I'm right in the middle. But uh, uh, there, you know, it's easy to get drawn into this battle uh, because, especially when when they're going. See, th- this is my my take, Reginald. Um, I, I think what we're going to see is an assault first on you know the implementation of the austerity first. Uh, on the government level, because then it gives more cover uh, to go to implement these uh, these draconian austerity measures on the private sector, in- increasing taxes, reducing services, that kind of thing. That's all coming uh, following the uh, the smackdown that uh, the government workers are going to get. But if we are fighting amongst each other, you know, blaming, you know, I, whatever, you you could do it race, you can do it class, you could do it sex, whatever you want to do. You, but if if we start doing that, you know, and, and I think. Reggie, I think that your channel and my channel will probably a natural progression of trying to point out what's going on and trying to get a grasp on the truth. I think we will actually um, be more of a, a calming uh, uh, outlet rather than a, a you know gloom and doom outlet because you know I'm not really surprised by what's going on, uh, but I think a lot of people are. I think a lot of people are are, are taken 
aback when they see protests in Wisconsin and Indiana. And I think they're really going to be taken back uh, aback when they see what's coming down the road in the way of, you know, extremely high food prices, extremely high energy prices. So I think alternative media at this po- at that point will turn into a more uh, a soothing uh, place to tune into because it'll be more of a voice of reason rather than a voice of panic, which we've both been accused of uh, over the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I always laugh when people say things like that about our channel about our channels because uh, <laughs> we we don't really uh, strive to scare people we strive to inform them we just want to empower people we want people to take the information and look at the information themselves and make their own decisions and make smart decisions and that's pretty much all we're trying to do here uh, with our with our channels and it's, it's it's a shame that people aren't always getting the real lesson people aren't really uh, figuring out what we're trying to do here. But a lot of people are getting it. A lot of people are waking up. I mean, even people that I thought would never do anything, they're actually talking about uh, water filters and things like that. So it's it's, it's quite fascinating. You know, it's Some amazing. people are actually waking up. Yeah, that that is amazing. And I talked about that with Eric today. You know, I mean, this community, everybody listening in the chat room right now, by the way, if you're not in the chat room, there's 121 people in there. You can go to widewakenews.com and click and uh, join the chat. Uh, but people listening in the chat room, listen to our videos. You know, I, I haven't, I didn't pull up your channel today, but I'm sure you have about 100 billion subscribers by now and three quadrillion video views. You know, th- th- this isn't really surprising to this community what's going on. I think more than anything, we're saying, wow, it took this long for uh, the unraveling to begin. Um, so what we see going on now has the, uh, you know, I don't know what to call them, the sheeple, the, the masses. I see more panic now in my my uh, fellow coworkers and people I meet on the street. Uh, you know, they're where we were two years ago. You know, they were looking. You know, we were looking for truth then. I was looking in the first Tea Party marches uh, when Bush was handing out uh, six hundred dollar checks. You know, we were looking for justice and truth then, and now you're seeing this mass awakening. And I think Reginald, that is one of the reasons we're going to have a very rapid acceleration from this point forward. They can't afford, you know, 300 million Reginalds or 300 million Charlies or 300 million, you know, the folks in the room um, waking up and, you know, bum-rushing the bums who got us here. (laughs) No, that wouldn't be uh, very good for their situation. No, um, the idea is to really get us to turn against one one another. And it's, it's pretty amusing watching Washington in general. I mean, once you get to the point where you're looking at them for what, who they really are and what they're actually doing, it's really easy to see right through their nonsense. I, I was just uh, reading about how the Republicans are going to cut $60 billion, which <laughs> when you look at a deficit of $1.5 or $1.6 or $1.5 trillion, I mean, it's right. actually quite laughable. I, it, it would be like me uh, getting drunk, going to a, a bars to bars, spending $150 here, $200 there, then going to Best Buy, buying three big screen TVs, buying a $1,000 <laughs> sound system, buying an Xbox, a PlayStation 3, buying $500 worth of accessories and video games, then uh, going off to more bars, and then finally stopping at a gas station and picking up a candy bar and saying, you know what, maybe I should hold back. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should put the nickel in my... In my yeah, I know. The, the <laughs> you just built up. It's just crazy at this point. And, and we're spending so much money just on the interest, on the debt. I don't yeah. think people realize how much of our money is going to just the interest on the debt. It's beyond uh, imagination at this point. I think people are comfortable because they assume that, well, because it worked yesterday and if things have been going on like this for years, that it's going to continue. Well, <laughs> if, if this could really work, then uh, empires would have stayed together, would have stayed intact for uh, much longer than they really have. This type of system always falls apart, and I'm afraid that a lot of people in this country aren't really prepared for it psychologically, uh, practically, physically, and when it happens, I think we're going to get an even more extreme reaction than the reactions you've seen in other countries. Oh, I agree. I agree. And my, my hope is uh, that, it, that it, uh, it doesn't turn into what we see going on uh, in Egypt and in Libya where, uh, where people are dying. But my, my reality, my... Uh, my awake side of my brain tells me that's exactly what's going to happen. You know, when, when I'm pulling headlines for my website and I'm catching these stories about, you know, the righties are saying the lefties want blood and the lefties are saying the righties want the police to use live ammunition, I know where this is going. This isn't going to end well. You know, and, and this this isn't 
uh, protesting over future money being spent. It, you know, I've said this over the last couple of days. The rubber has met the road. It is uh, go time. Period. You know, now money, actual dollars are going to start coming out of people's pockets to pay for the crimes of the Wall Street banksters. And uh, this is when it's going to get real. This is when we're going to see uh, the kind of things that you've been warning about for so long. Yeah, not only that, their dollars are going to mean less. Absolutely. They're going to be yeah, I was gonna... Uh, buying less, which is going to be the real big shocker when they see the food prices go up. Because we've both been talking about food prices going up across the world, uh, the, the price of wheat, the price of uh, a, a lot of different food items. I mean, hitting uh, almost record levels. And this is according to U.N. organizations as well. So uh, we're going to see the consequence of it. And I think the, really the source of all the rioting, people are talking about democracy and, and, uh, and, and Egypt and blah, blah, this, and elections, and reform. Uh, I think it comes down to people aren't able to support their families. The, the cost of food has gone up so much that people cannot afford to feed their families. They have 30% unemployment rate in some of these countries where people are uh, people are rioting, and that's what's really driving it. People can't afford to support themselves and their families, so now they're getting pissed, and they want to change, and that's really what's driving it. That's really what's really getting people angry. And the, the consequences of Bernanke and crew devaluing the dollar, we're beginning to see that. We're beginning to see that now it's going to, it's going to take a lot more dollars to buy the food you used to buy. Well, we're seeing the yeah. consequences of that. So, No, I agree with you. I, I was just going to interject with uh, what the dollar did today. We're at 77.19, down 0.17 on the day. Uh, and, and today is the quintessential collapse day. Uh, that, that uh, I had imagined where we saw a significant increase in uh, gold and silver, a falling dollar and a Dow that's down 107 points. I, I think uh, we're going to see a lot more days just like this, Reginald. Uh, it, you know, unless by some miracle there is a, a program out there, a kick the can down the road another year program uh, or cover up or con job, uh, that the government is going to unleash, but man, I, you know what? I, I think every, uh, I think they're all in. I don't think there's any more bullets left in the in the gun. Uh, the Federal Reserve, you know, they've had zero interest rates for infinity now. Uh, now quantitative easing is uh, is proven to do not what it was intended to do, and, and now you have a devaluing dollar, and all this cash has been pumped into the system, trying to find some place to go. You see uh, people leaving the stock market, leaving equities, and they're looking for a place to put their money. They're putting it in gold and silver. They're putting in commodities, which is going to cause more uh, pressure on these to rise higher, uh, all in, in a stagnant uh, world economy, or at least the Western world economy. Maybe some of the developing uh, countries are, are uh, having a little more growth uh, activity. But even there, we see a massive bubble in real estate in China. Um, and, and, you know, any one of these, any one event that's happening right now globally uh, could, uh, could lead to a, a, a catastrophe. You know, any one of them, and there's multiple. I mean, food. You have uh, you have uh, overthrowing of governments. You have the world's energy supply teetering on the brink. You have uh, you know we're in 200 plus countries militarily. Uh, you have civil unrest domestically uh, and in just about every corner of the world. And uh, any one thing could spark this cascade that will lead to a rapid, rapid decline uh, of everything. Rising uh, uh, interest rates, collapsing currencies, skyrocketing food uh, commodity pricing. And, uh, you know, hold on. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Definitely. I'm looking at oil uh, touching at $100 per barrel today, just touching up on yeah. that. It, it's going to clear that easily by the end of the week. I thought it was uh, ironic that yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought uh, it was ironic yesterday we had a few stories that said, well, we could see $5 a gallon gas, maybe in part of the country, but probably just California. Boom, we hit $5 today in California. Uh, they were talking $150 a barrel oil potentially. I saw some stories today that people are predicting uh, if a Momar crazy nut job goes off uh, on his country the way he has talked about doing, you know, we could be looking at three, $400 a barrel oil. And, uh, you know, that's one of the that's one of the fingers in the dike, fingers in the proverbial dike that I'm talking about. You know, in Muammar Gaddafi, they, they, they tout in mainstream media how he, he produces 2 percent of the world oil. True enough. But there's uh, 20 percent or so, roughly, I'm, I'm pulling that figure uh, out of memory, that uh, runs through his country on pipeline that he could stop. Uh, you know, he's already ordered sabotage. He's killing his own people. He, he goes ahead and messes with 20 percent of the energy supply of the world. And then, you know, it, it's game over. 
<laughs> Somebody said in the chat room, game over. Well, he said in the speech that uh, he hasn't ordered any shots to be fired, which is really funny. And it, but then he also said that if he does order uh, any shots to be fired, uh, the whole country is going to burn. Everything will burn. I, those those were his words. Everything will burn. Hope everybody can still hear me. Uh, welcome back to Wide Awake Radio. I'm Charlie McGrath, your host. My website's wideawakenews.com. My guest is Dimcat, also known as Reginald, a uh, good friend of the program and a uh, one of the originals, uh, one of the originals crying in the wilderness for over two years now. Uh, somebody called me out in the chat room about uh, the fact of how much oil Libya controls. I understand they produce about 2% of uh, the world's energy daily. Um, and I'm trying to find, I was trying to find that whole break, the, uh, the story that uh, spoke to how much oil flows through their country. Uh, and I don't, know, I don't understand if it flows through uh, into a port or they control a, uh, a shipping lane or whatnot. Uh, but the, the story that I had read was upwards of 20% plus uh, they could have an effect on. And uh, so I'm going to try to find that story uh, before the end of the show and put that into the chat room. Uh, so, so people didn't, uh, well, if you think I misspoke, I want to clarify. So Reginald, uh, let's talk about Libya for a minute. Uh, right. unbelievable, unbelievable what's going on over there today. Um, you know, is this, uh, there's two schools of thought completely engineered. Uh, we have it being run out of DC, this unrest. Uh, the reason the, the, uh, the backstory would be, they need, a, they need something to blame the next giant leg down on the economy on. Uh, that is one theory. The other one is it's completely organic. It's growing uh, out of the uh, Egyptian and Tunisian unrest and pushback. Where, where does your uh, thought pattern lie? Well, I, I think it's probably more organic simply because even if they did have something like this to blame on the economy for uh, going downward, people don't really care why. As, we, as we're seeing in uh, certain parts of the U.S. with these protests. People don't care why things are bad. Uh, people, are, they just react when things are bad. So trying to come up with a good excuse for why things are bad that isn't really going to help you. If unemployment continues to increase in this country, people aren't going to want to hear the excuses. Yeah, so they're I, not going to it's, it's more. I think a lot of this food, a lot, a lot of the food that people buy in these uh, countries, a lot of it is... Uh, a lot of this food is priced in dollars or currencies that are highly uh, linked to the dollar. And I think when the devaluation of the dollar happened, it sort of forced the prices to go up in other currencies that were heavily linked to the dollar. So that's pretty much my theory. Yeah, I, uh, well, I, you're right. I mean, when it uh, when it all hits the fan, people aren't really going to care. Uh, I'm with you. I think this is organic. I don't think you can have this many people uh, for this sustained period of time. And I think the reason you alluded to earlier uh, is accurate. You know, it isn't because they're searching for their color le- revolution. They're they're searching for something to eat, and uh, the poorest countries in the world are the first to be affected by all this insane monetary policy that we have. And to that note, I want to switch gears just a little bit. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, cow knows 1.2 million barrels a day is what uh, Libya produces. I, I understand that's what they produce. I what I was trying to get at was uh, uh, how much oil could Gaddafi potentially disrupt. So if anybody has an article on that, dump it in there. I want to check it out. Um, what I want to jump well, to now. I put an article right? there with some information on oil companies in Libya and how they're sort of linked. Oh, so, uh, okay, cool. it's, it's a Reuters article, so you can check that out. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. I, I did want to shift. Hold on one sec, Randall. <coughs> I can't get through the whole show without that. Um, so I wanted to jump gears or jump a little bit in the same uh in the same vein, though, it's you know hungry people around the Middle East who are pushing back, and uh, the G20 yeah, notes coming out from there has the IMF, and I dumped this story into the chat room a little bit ago. Uh, they have a plan, man. They're going to save the world uh, from going hungry, and I, and I'm reading this and I'm like, uh, oh my God, here we go again. You know, we we did the bailouts that led to this quantitative easing that led to all this money creation. All these nations around the world, all their central banks, decided to crank up the printing presses. And now we're seeing people riot and die because a direct result of that action. And the IMF's answer is they're going to come in and do what? They're going to lend more money uh, to these smaller, uh, less developed economies. 
and it's you know it's economic hitman 101. They're going to go in and take somebody who's already beaten and downtrodden, and they're going to offer them a lifeline. But it isn't a lifeline. It's going to be shackles, plain and simple. And I see that coming here. Uh, and I don't see it taking – I want to get your take on this, Reginald. I don't see the progression uh, slowing or maintaining. I see the progression of events uh, escalating and the acceleration uh, going through the roof. It's, it's almost daily now where we have something popping up overseas and in this country, Wisconsin, Indiana, moving on to, to 22 other states that have similar legislation that they want to try to get passed. Uh, I think it's uh, full speed ahead from here on out. Uh, what do you see the next six to eight months looking like, Reginald? Well, I, I just kept thinking about a uh, crack in the dam. <laughs> it may start off slow, but it may uh, it escalate as the crack starts starts to really expand. I sort of noticed that with windshields as well. When you start off with a little crack, but if there's more damage to it, it spreads a lot more. So it's just a little observation I had. That's a good point. It is, it is a, you know, it's a finger in the dike, like I said, and it's being pulled out, and uh, it's, uh, it's go time for sure. Um, what, if, what are we looking at uh, in the Midwest? Are we seeing a lot of this, uh, this pushback by uh, state workers and local workers? What did I read, that uh, Detroit has to close half their schools now? Oh, that's just insane. Uh, basically, Detroit, is, their population has been decreasing for the last decade or so, simply because a lot of people have been moving out of the city. It's been suffering economically. Uh, it's industry, it's automotive industry has been in decline. A lot of the jobs have left the country. A lot of people have left the, the actual uh, city, the area. And what's happening right now is the, the state is telling Detroit that they're going to have to shut down half of their schools. Half of their schools, they have about 74,000 kids in their district. By 2014, they're probably going to be down to 59,000 kids. But they're going to shut down half the schools, and they're going to put 60 kids in certain classrooms. They're going to actually have 60 kids in classrooms, probably the high schools. Unbelievable. Uh, it, it, it's unbelievable. It would be completely unmanageable. Um, we do have a caller. Do you want to handle a phone call? Sure. Right All right, we're going to go to Tim from Seattle. Tim, are you there? Uh, yes, I am, Charlie. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. You know, uh, Tim and Charlie, I've been looking at this, and um, if history's any lesson, it looks like it's going to go to gangology. I mean, it looks like the, the country is going to be broke up into um, groups of city states and even all the way down to a gang. And I'm looking at the board and I'm thinking, you know, you got two choices: either you get part of a small community and get ready for this tidal wave, or you start f- forming up a crew, uh, start taking scores, knocking banks over, and um, uh, go the criminal route. But uh, you know, I'm just taking a look at. You know what? How do you think it's all going to stick together? I mean, uh, the, the whole thing looks like it's breaking up. Well, I, I you know, I agree. It is it is breaking up, and and battle lines are being drawn right now. And you need to know, look no further than you know these ridiculous articles coming out where uh, the so-called left is calling for blood. Uh, and the so-called right is uh, saying the police should use live ammo. I mean, that tells the whole story right there. It, it could come unhinged and uncorked very quickly. Uh, I don't know about taking the criminal the criminal route, uh, but uh, I certainly do believe that uh, your network that you have, uh, wherever you live, you're in Seattle, I'm, I'm in Montana, Reginald's in the Midwest, your network of friends and family are going to become more important than you ever thought possible. And actually, that could be one uh, uh, one positive thing that comes out of uh, this environment we're in now and going forward is you're truly going to uh, lean on the ones you love and you're truly going to understand uh, the value of uh, family and the value of uh, loyalty to one another. So, Reginald, what are your thoughts? Should we go uh, rob some banks or are you going to take a different route? Well, you're definitely going to find out how many friends you really do have. <laughs> a lot of people are convinced that they have 20 or 30 friends. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> you're going to find out really quickly how many friends you actually have. As far as crime, I definitely think there's going to be a lot more crime. And I think it's going to be interesting because not only do you have less resources going to people, and that's usually when you see crime goes up, not just unemployment, 
But um, when you when you see see people have less access to resources, whether it comes from the government or wh- or whatever, that's when you see a lot of people get desperate and turn to crime. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with all these college students, all these college graduates, all these people with all these degrees. Some of them worthless, but some of them are actually pretty good degrees. Uh, there's a lot of people who actually have some really good trades, uh, blue collar, uh, white collar, whatever. Uh, uh, people, electricians, uh, carpenters, people who actually have real skills. Uh, people with uh, major in, majors in computer science. It'll be interesting to see what these people do when they don't have a job, just the younger people, when they don't have a job, and it'll be interesting to see what type of criminal organizations they form because uh, one of the expectations I had for this year was uh, an emergence of a new class of criminals, criminals with uh, much more uh, knowledge than your typical idiot uh, guy robs your house, a uh, guy breaks into your house and leaves his uh, cell phone charger a cell phone and a cell phone charger and in the wall or something like that. No, none of that type of foolishness. You may see a lot of that, but you may see more uh, knowledgeable criminals, and it'll be interesting to see uh, how that really develops when you have all these people with a lot of skills who are unemployed and don't have resources. Yeah, that's right. And, and on top of that, you know, couple with that, uh, with austerity comes a, a diminishing uh, police force. Uh, so you, you will have, uh, you know, less... Uh, less security, less uh, police roaming the streets, um, and that's coming. I mean, it, you know, they, what did they do? They handed out pink slips. Uh, where was that at? Rhode Island today? They handed out pink slips, slips to every single teacher they had, uh, it, just in case they want to fire them next year. They have to. They have to do it by March of the previous year. So they're putting all these these uh, government workers on notice that austerity's coming, plain and simple, and it's not going to stop with teachers. It's going to go to police, firemen. Uh, you know, services that we've all come to expect when we pick up that phone and dial 911, well, that's going to change. I mean, it has to change. And it, it isn't uh, a doom and gloom. It's reality. You know, we don't have the money. We don't have the tax base. We went from one uh, projected uh, CBO projected deficit of $1.24 trillion this year to a White House admitted $1.67 trillion this year. And it was all because of the $300 billion was all because of a, a shortfall in revenue. That is services that are going to go by the wayside. Now, if you were a too-big-to-fail bank, they would just steal from the future and pay you off now. But you're not. You're living in your house. You're uh, you're just a citizen. You're a sheeple. You're a cog, and uh, you could uh, you can your services can be let go. So you know, yeah, Tim, it's a great point. I mean, you know, get together. Yeah, my get last your... point. My last point. Uh, I think the biggest thing, the one, the single biggest thing that anybody can do, is find out where there's a uh, a prosperous area, uh, like here in Western Washington. We haven't been touched like Detroit or Philadelphia or Atlanta. Any place, I mean, it's literally recession-proof out here. But find a place in the country where the money's at and then move. I think the biggest thing somebody can do is move. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Hey, Tim, thanks for the call. I, I greatly appreciate it. So we have the lines open, 877-342-6673. You can call in with questions for Reginald. I did write some down from the chat room. Holy cow, we have 130 people in the chat room still. Usually we use a, uh, lose a chunk of them after the... Uh, one and only commercial break, but they're hanging around tonight. That's got to be you, Reginald. And I can <laughs> prove that. I can prove that because for the first time ever in my life, I've seen a, uh, a, a chat room handle of uh, Dim Cads Got Girls, <laughs> <laughs> which you, you got fans, man. They're following you around, so that's that's outstanding. Uh, Crystal had a question. Um, if you got more questions, post them in the chat now. I'll try to get to them, uh, take them out of there. Chris had a question about trucking. Do you think we'll see a grind, uh, a standstill in uh, in trucking? Um, I, I'll ask that first, Reginald, and then kick it to you. I, I think that uh, oh, that's a tough one because I, I, I printed a, a chart on uh, the Baltic Dry today because I wanted to see where it stood right now, and it's, it's way down. So uh, the actual demand uh, for fuel I think is low. You know, the the world's economy is stagnant. Like I said, there's some emerging economies that are that seem to be uh, booming in a bubble right now. But the uh, the superpower, the United States, the number one economy in the world, is languishing. So the the uh, the the need for fuel is always going to be there. But the the high demand um, isn't necessarily there right now. In fact, I think most uh, refineries are running at about eighty um, percent. 
That being said, I don't think speculators and I don't think uh, you know the good boys on Wall Street would ever miss an opportunity to speculate the market to the moon. And you know we could certainly see 150, 200 dollar barrel oil, and that uh, you know that'll put a lot of businesses out of business. I know I'm in the I'm in the business world. I I see the sales we make every single day, and I'm telling you one thing right now: we're we're trying to exist on volume. We're certainly not trying to exist on margin uh, because uh, it just isn't there. You have to give stuff away, almost literally in some cases, uh, to get some volume sales going. So if we saw a big ramp up in uh, fuel prices, you're, I think uh, it would stall this economy that's already uh, in reverse, in my opinion. Uh, so that being said, everything you eat 1,500 miles before it gets to your grocery shelf, uh, grocery store shelf. Um, if we saw high fuel prices, uh, it's going to get ugly. I hope you have some a few weeks worth of uh, supply stored. One of the reasons guys like Dimcat's been coming on for a long time saying, you know, put some rice in, put some lentil in, put a couple weeks worth of uh, man-made or natural disaster supplies uh, in your pantry because these days could come. Well, guess what? We're almost there. Ahead, <laughs> Absolutely, and I hope people have been listening. I really do. But um, the people who didn't listen, they're going to be dealing with a situation where they're going to have to buy food, but it's going to cost a lot more. So if you were listening, then you you should be well prepared. It's interesting, whenever there's a a snowstorm, people rush to the grocery stores. And it sort of shows you how few people are really preparing. They have so so little food in their house that they're rushing to the grocery store (laughs) simply because of a storm. They should already have plenty of food stocked away, but most don't. Most don't, but it is being talked about more, Reginald. Uh, I, you know, you you alluded to the fact that the general public is starting to be more concerned about things like uh, gold and silver and monetary policy. Uh, I see more and more people that I work with that I deal with that are talking about, oh man, I got to get to Costco because they understand that this the South just had a big freeze, Northern Mexico just had a big freeze, and uh, produce is about to shoot through the roof. They understand that you know corn has virtually doubled in the last six months. So you know, like like we've said for a long time. A lot of people aren't going to know until it kicks in their door and hits them in the head like a sledgehammer. And, and I truly think that's where we're at at this point. I'm going to go to a uh, to another caller, and I think the chat name is Nisam Live. I hope I'm not butchering that. Uh, Nisam Live, are you there? Yes. yes. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. How, how do I say the name right? Oh. Uh, no, that's okay. It, it's Ninzium okay. Live. Ninzium Live. Ninzium. Okay, Ninzium Live. Thank you for okay. calling. I appreciate your participation. Do you have a question? Yes. No, I just wanted to make a real brief, uh, brief comment. Um, Charlie, first of all, I, you know, I agree with what everybody is saying. You, uh, uh, Lindsey Williams, Alex Jones, everybody in the Patriot Movement. But, um, Charlie, what's happening in the United States is the holy divine judgment of God Almighty. Now, I know this is not a religious station, but what we are seeing is God literally shutting down industry top to bottom in this country. We are going to see super terrorism on a geometric scale. We're going to see horrors beyond comprehension. All we can do is to repent before God, get our food, get some ammo, pray for your families, Connect with some neighbors that are like-minded and pray like hell that we have the strength to endure what is coming because all our anarchy and civil war is coming to the United States. If you look at the Middle East, these Middle Eastern countries, people are blaming the U.S. for what's happening in these, in these countries. Absolutely. We could see super terrorism straight from the very bowels of hell. And may God in heaven help us. And may God bless everybody here. Bye. Hey, you know what? I, I greatly appreciate your passion. And I uh, appreciate your call. So let's let's get into the Armageddon scenario, Reginald. Uh, first of all, uh, you're right. The, you know, I've stayed on here before. I am a Christian. I, I don't uh, come on here and talk uh, uh, religion. That's everybody's uh, own uh, choice and their own, uh, you know, it's their own path they're going to take. There's plenty of good stations that do that. However, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, Reginald, it's kind of hard to, you know, it's kind of hard to read the book of Daniel or some res- revelation and not draw a correlation uh, to what the heck's going on right now. Um, and he's right. There is the Middle East. Let, let's, let's talk about the Middle East for a second. You know, these people, uh, Mubarak in uh, Egypt, you know, he, he was uh, receiving a billion plus dollars a year from our very own country. Our tax dollars, right, are, are going in to support this uh, 
uh, this despot. You know, and then we have uh, Gaddafi, who ever since uh, he became a great partner on the war on terror in, in the early 2000s, he has uh, received uh, pretty much a blank check from our government, a blank, or, or I should say a blank check. He's uh, received a blind eye uh, on how he's treated his people. And I'm sure, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure we're subsidizing uh, him by, uh, by, for his uh, cooperation in the war on terror. Uh, but in reality, the citizens who have to live under this effect um, are the ones who are building up animosity towards the U.S. And I, I truly have a tough time saying this because I served uh, in my I served my country. I was in the army and I was in uh, a war for this country over in that region of the world. But it, when I look at reality, when I look at what these people are going through, starving in the streets, you know, willing to die uh, so they could get a bite to eat, uh, I have to say, is some you know, as Ron Paul says, is some of their uh, anger justified? And I have to come to the conclusion of, you know, if somebody was meddling in my business, my kid couldn't get enough to eat because some other uh, foreign government was uh, meddling in my country's affairs, then I, I absolutely would hold some hostility. Your thoughts. Touchy subject, I know. Thanks for the call, uh, Nia Sim Live. Sorry if I butchered your name. Yeah, well, you know the difference between an ally and a terrorist? Go ahead. <laughs> They both kill innocent people, but one does it for us. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, unfortunately, that's funny. It's not funny, but it's funny, and it's true. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, I see our government now turning uh, on Gaddafi. Uh, you know, of course they're going to uh, talk down what he has done and call for international sanctions, this, that, and the other thing. But in reality, you know, he, he has gotten a pass. He's gotten a pass from us ever since. He said, I'm going to get rid of my nuclear program, and I'm going to become a big partner on the war on terror. And, and frankly, he's probably feeling a, a whole lot betrayed right now uh, because the West isn't, uh, you know, in his corner anymore. Uh, and so when he comes out making statements of he's going to die a martyr, I believe him. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I also believe him when he says that everything will burn. Yeah, it's terrifying. And when you look at the articles, a lot of oil goes through there. It's a lot more than 2%. I put some links in the description, well, in the chat room. Uh, those links, that showed how a lot of major oil companies have a lot of uh, reserves in uh, Libya, and they have a lot of stuff that goes through there. So it, it's pretty significant. It's pretty much where yeah, all the oil is in that area. Right, and and that's and that's what I was alluding to. I, I, I'll read that article. I'll probably have to wait till after the show's over, but I'll read that article and – and try to be a, a little more clear on that tomorrow when Dex is on. Um, I, I know I know that the production of the country is two percent or, or less, uh, but I know he has the ability to affect. I'm going to leave it at that. The ability to affect a great uh, a great deal more than two percent of the world's oil supply. And it really, you know, another news report came out today. I, I actually, I sat down to shoot a video before the show, and, and the, you know, I, I alluded to that a minute ago. Uh, was going to be on you know how to treat your fellow man you know let's let's not lose focus when this anger is being generated but there's so many articles Reginald just coming uh, nonstop you know on, on different topics on different regions of the world uh, I, I didn't even mention yet with about two minutes ago on the show uh, that Iran is back in the mix because they're sending warships out uh, for the first time since 1979 they've uh, encroached into territory they haven't uh, been in since that time frame. So tinderbox uh, is an understatement. What do you say to that region of the world? And that, <clears throat> I mean, that, that literally could spark everything into, you know, basically, uh, as the caller said, judgment days type stuff. Well, I hope it doesn't get that bad. I hope the power grid doesn't go down here in America because you think you've seen bad things. You're going to see something unlike anything we've ever seen in this country if that ever happens. But uh, let's just hope that stays up. Uh, because uh, if something like that happens, uh, you're going to see a lot of sick people who rely on medicine uh, die, essentially. You're going to see a, a lot of food systems break down, uh, refrigeration break down, and if people don't have any backups, they're going to be in big trouble. So I really hope that doesn't happen. I hope it doesn't come to that. Absolutely. And I think the, the important message, you know, I know mine has been mentally prepare for what's going on. If you're not there, uh, it's too late. I mean, you can't mentally prepare if you were yesterday thinking uh, the economy is recovering because the Dow Jones is at 12,000 points. Uh, it's too late, man. I mean, we're, we're into this thing now. Uh, I, I think uh, full speed. I, I, words of advice. We've got about a minute left. 
Um, I, I want to hear yours, Reginald, because you've always had uh, good advice over the last couple of years. Uh, what, what do you think is the most important thing somebody who's just waking up should be doing right now? Well, understand that if you have a modest income like myself or a lot of working class people, uh, the sooner you start preparing, the better. Uh, the idea that, well, something isn't going to happen, well, think of it this way. There's a reason why you have insurance. There's a reason why you take precautions. You take precautions in case the worst does happen. Now, just because you haven't been in a car accident doesn't mean it's a good idea to drive without the insurance. So at, at this point, uh, you don't want to be fearful. You just want to be sensible and acquire food, water. And by water, I mean uh, acquire bleach, so something you can use to actually purify water, something that you can actually use to uh, clean water. So knowledge and preparation are going to be really, really key right now. The first thing you need to do is just start to acquire really good information. You can find that all over the Internet, all over YouTube. 